you this morning. Energy prices and the PM's trip to the United States really dominate uh, the front pages and the news agenda so far this morning. Let's get some analysis on these from Bill Bouquet, reporter at Reaction.life, political commentator and contributor to Young Voices UK. Good morning, Bill. Very good morning, Callum. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, Let's start then with with energy prices. Um, I suppose an interesting sort of circular consideration here, in in some ways, is that taxpayers are now facing a bill to prop up suppliers. Uh, But it's these same taxpayers, of course, who would be facing uh, remarkably high energy prices as well, and who are going to have to try and support energy providers given the hike in prices that that appears now to be be imminent. Um, A meeting this morning uh, between the government and uh, and energy providers to try to work out a way forward. In your view, is, a, is, is taxpayers kind of bailing out um, energy companies? Is this the right way forward? Is this what's going to be required of us in the next couple of months? Well, in America, uh, when it comes to their political system, uh, they have a term for uh, members of the Republican Party who don't necessarily follow the party line. They call them rhinos. Well, it feels like recently with Uh, the announcement with a hike in national insurance, uh, as well as uh, propping up businesses that uh, the Conservative Party are becoming uh, kinos, almost conservatives in name only. And and they're having to use these uh, emergency loans and being the pragmatic um, government that they are because energy companies are in a really dire situation at the moment when it comes to uh, this shortage, um, which is going to be disastrous as as we're seeing with some energy companies, um, they're calling for a bailout with the likes of Bowl because uh, of the lack of demand and the hike in prices, which means it's unaffordable to, to most people. So it is going to be a really difficult winter uh, for them, uh, as well as other businesses, um, with also a potential fire break, uh, lockdown occurring, uh, as well as other measures to prop up and assist the NHS it's so fascinating, all of this, isn't it? So five suppliers have collapsed since the start of last month. Several more are thought to be on the brink because they have failed to buy enough wholesale energy to keep supplying customers at the low rates they promised. Um, is there any argument in here, Bill, that we've, we've kind of got used to this um, and low prices and being able to fix a low price in terms of the deals that we, we sit on for, for, what, a year, a couple of years, perhaps? And actually, the, the kind of lack of foresight means that we've, we've kind of got ourselves into this problem. It's true. I mean, if you look at the current system um, at the moment, actually why there is um, such soaring prices, it's it's mainly because um, of natural gas and also uh, electricity prices on the whole market. Um, And we're in, if I can say probably, um, to put an analogy, it's a bit like putting on the kettle uh, during the commercial break sort of moments and people are starting to wake up. Uh, as the winter approaches. Um, and you are right. I mean, the Prime Minister has insisted uh, that what we're seeing at the moment is going to be temporary and that he is confident in the supply chain and also that the market um, will adjust itself uh, in a swift uh, and measurable fashion. Um, but others are less optimistic about it. I mean, it, this affects all firms, but the ones that are mainly going to be affected uh, are these smaller firms who don't have... Uh, the accessible funds at the side um, to prop themselves up during this difficult period. But we've seen this before where we've seen a hike in uh, prices and it has measured itself in the past. And there has been a lot of assurances from the government, from the business sector, Kwasi Card saying, who is, of course, um, having this, uh, chairing this meeting and also uh, looking at the more wider reaching impacts that this will have on the economy. Absolutely. And, and this meeting is key. Uh, we'll bring you all the details on that on Times Radio throughout this morning, of course. Uh, something else then that we'll be watching closely on Times Radio is the Prime Minister's trip to the United States. Uh, he's going to the UN, he's going to the White House. Of course, it's his first uh, sort of major uh, foreign trip post-pandemic. Um, and I, I guess we could start there, Bill. I mean, in terms of um, Boris uh, Johnson as Prime Minister, in terms of the UK on a global stage, in your analysis, how, how important, how significant a trip is this very significant indeed i mean as we've seen the prime minister has a lot in his hands at the moment with the toolbox and measures uh, with the a potential winter wave of um coronavirus cases and obviously conferences coming up in the le- next two weeks but this is a really big focus um this trip not only to uh, the united nations as you mentioned in your previous segment 
Um, and sync, sh- but also Bill, oh, sorry, to go on, speak Bill. directly with Joe Biden. Um, and, um, and and with that, uh, with 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 this trip, um, it, it has been long overdue. I mean, it's been a year and a half, and normally be visiting uh, beforehand. Um, but there's going to be a lot on the agenda. Uh, not only climate financing, but also this travel corridor, uh, as well as a potential trade deal, um, as we're seeing, because he's also going to be joined uh, by Liz Truss, the new foreign secretary, who in her policy exchange speech the other day uh, was kind of pushing the idea that Britain is ready and raring uh, for a trade deal with the United States. Yeah, it's, it's so fascinating. It's so important. I just wonder, um, you know, he's obviously coming off the back of this uh, the submarine uh, deal as well, the UK-US-Australia partnership from, from last week. I suppose uh, that probably sends Boris Johnson and indeed Liz Trust to the United States w- with sort of great enthusiasm about where they're placing um, Britain on the world stage. Definitely. And Boris has been talking about the idea of global Britain for a long time, but uh, there hasn't been a lot of substance as to what that could be, but uh, with with this um, security uh, arrangement with Australia, uh, the UK, and the United States, that that could be it. And it's kind of interesting to to note that um, you know that they've met previously before they met at the G7, and there's been widely reported there have been tensions between uh, US President Joe Biden as well as Boris Johnson. What with uh, Boris appearing as kind of an ally of Trump and also there's been tension on the Northern Ireland Protocol uh, as well as um, uh, multiple Conservative MPs um, speaking out against uh, the United States pulling troops out of Kabul. Uh, but we're starting to see that animosity maybe seemingly kind of easing uh, what with this trip um, open arms from the United States, the red carpet, as previously mentioned, uh, as well as a lot of collaboration uh, in the run up to COP26 in November. Yeah, really good points, really interesting. Uh- our thanks to uh, Bill Bouquet, reporter at Reaction.life, political commentator and contributor to Young Voices UK.